This is the tale of 12 children. Thanks to all the people that have subscribed this week, really do appreciate it. Remember we give away a free Nintendo Switch game each and every month and we've actually got a couple of copies of this one to give away. Just leave your comments down below and let us know what you think of the game. Fuga Melodies of Steel is CyberConnect 2's latest RPG strategy game. It combines turn-based elements with a base building aspect and it's the fourth title in the Little Tail Bronx series. I guess it's a testament to just how addictive this one is that this review is slightly late only because I can't stop playing it. In a world filled with anthropomorphic cats and dogs based loosely around World War II Germany and riding around in a giant tank, what could, uh, how could it not be an Insta classic? Perhaps this will be your next Switch pickup? Well, let's find out. Go on expeditions to explore ancient ruins. Fight. The narrative acts as quite an overt metaphor of World War II France. It features the Burman Empire, who are the dog race, and the story begins with the destruction of our main character's village, only to be directed into the woods and find a gigantic old tank. It's called the Tyrannus, and there's far more to this than meets the eye. Every member of the crew has their own stories, and through having each crew member converse with each other, you can unlock more through these link events. There are several cutscenes which take place between battles, and a narrator guides the whole experience. You can play using either Japanese or French voices, and the story takes you across the globe. You'll be trying to find your villagers to rescue the members of your family, and they've essentially been sent to a camp, and as a group, you've decided to go and rescue them. There are several smaller stories along the way, but this one main narrative drive sees the whole experience through. There aren't any choices to make along the path, which I feel was a bit of a shame, as there are some big choices made by the characters, and having this done by the player would have been a little bit more engaging. I do love how much of the narrative builds through player choice though. You decide who you talk to, and this in turn affects the gameplay, which we'll talk about now. The game's split into two different segments. On the one hand, you'll be riding through the stages on your tank. You can see a path at the top of the screen. Sometimes this diverges into normal difficulty, safer routes and more dangerous with a risk reward mechanic. Along the timeline, you can also see which events will take place, the number of battles, whether there's gonna be any expeditions, and if there are any health pickups along the way. When you enter combat, Fuga Melodies of Steel takes on an Advanced Wars style camera perspective, and the Tyrannus has three separate gun turrets, with the weapons being split into three different categories. The red heavy damage cannons have a lower accuracy with grenade launchers in yellow, and the faster machine guns in blue. Each of them has a percentage chance to hit. And while the turn order is shown at the top, the different colors you choose will relate directly to these colors shown by the enemies. If you can attack using both of those, it will knock them back down the timeline, allowing you to perform more attacks before it's then their turn. This is the heart of the combat. It's where it shines, it's where its simplicity is, but it's also where most of the strategy takes place. If your colors don't match up, you can switch in new children to mount those weapons. But there's more here than just matching the colors. You'll also be thinking about the affinities of the characters and the relationships they've built with each other. The hearts shown here show you the bond level between the characters. A higher bond means they'll work better together. It also generally means you'll have unlocked more link attack moves. The more attacks they make together, the higher their happiness will go. And when it reaches 100, you can then perform your link moves. These are devastating screen clearing attacks, but they roll over between combat rounds, so sometimes it's worth hanging on to them. Combat can be split into a number of rounds, with three rounds being the upper limit. This means you'll have to fight your way through three groups before you can move on. There are a couple of gripes I have here that stuck with me for the remainder of the game. The first of them is there's no ability to speed up time. And while in the earlier rounds, maybe the first four or five hours, that was fine. Later in the game, I felt in some of the minor fights, it would have been nice to speed things up a touch particularly when it was the enemy's turn. In addition to this, I would have liked them to show which round you are currently fighting, as sometimes you'll be juggling your resources to survive, only to find out that actually you have one more round and you're almost definitely gonna lose. Alongside your HP, which is shown down in the corner, you've also got your SP. This is what allows you to perform special moves and attacks. In classic fashion, you can restore this using items, but between battles, 
There are different routes, some of them allowing you to restore them by riding over ammo crates and other pickups. If in combat your health gets too low, you have the option of using the Soul Cannon. This is a slightly macabre device which allows you to sacrifice one of your players, but it emits such a powerful beam it will destroy any enemies. And when I say nice, I mean absolutely horrific, but interesting. But in reality, I didn't find it was necessary at all. Early in the title it forces you to use it and later it may come up and say you probably should use it because your health is low but if you know how to play and use health items etc you won't have to end up using it. And aside from the initial one time it was never used for me again in my entire playthrough. Fairness to the game though it does give you the option of a harder path that will give you better rewards and maybe if I took a few more of those it might have come up. It just felt perhaps that after that first time it was going to be a mechanic that was relied upon at least once or twice in the rest of the game. Every aspect of your combat is analysed from the number of turns it takes, the damage you receive and your technical ability. This then gives you a rank and based on that you'll receive different rewards. At the end of every stage you'll generally have a boss fight to overcome. These as you'd expect are much tougher and they'll require much more strategy. Often they'll have a much higher armour rating or a unit that heals them and you have to concentrate on this first before you can do any damage. They may also shift between different phases such as an attack and defensive one and require the player to constantly shift and switch between the available children to best deal with the shifting challenges. Between combat and the next stage there's a map screen which can show you your current location. There's not much to see here and it generally follows the formula of visit a town in which you can chat to three people and get a free item and then barter at the shop for any gear you need. Oh, and uh, read a comic book. That, that's a thing. Between rounds, you'll be inside your ship. You'll have a wish list, which is essentially a bunch of errands for the different characters. And by meeting all of these, you'll make them happy. And making them happy makes them fight better. And it's from here that you'll also build those relationships by spending these points shown in the corner. Sometimes you'll have a question to answer, which will massively boost the relationship if you give the right answer. And it's also here that you'll be tending to the wounds of any injured party members. Sometimes in combat they may suffer an injury if the health of your ship goes too low. You can travel freely around, upgrade your weapons, improve the facilities and you can also go junk fishing. Everything's based on a percentage chance and these percentages increase the higher the relationship is between different characters. It's a nice mechanic for allowing the player to relax a little between stages. Once again I feel like they don't give you enough information as to the different relationships between the players. It could have shown you the current relationship status of each of those characters based on the one you're currently controlling. There are a few little details like that throughout the 12 chapters of the game where a tiny bit more refinement would have gone a long way. Despite a few minor flaws, Fugue Melodies of Steel is an incredibly addictive game. This review is late just because I couldn't stop playing it. It has that pick up and play and play and play and play quality that some games manage to capture. Certainly Advance Wars would have been one of them. It's massively helped by the different relationships and you'll get more out of the game by attending to those and nurturing them. And if you do have to use that soul cannon, it is going to be a brutally difficult choice. Narratively speaking, it's quite straightforward and a touch too on the nose for my liking, but at least it's clear to the player why you are actually doing these things. There are a number of different endings to unlock and it's one more reason I felt like they should have given the player a few more choices directly. I give gameplay 17 out of 20. It's certainly enjoyable, but it does suffer from a little repetition as you go on, even down to some of the boss fights being duplicate vehicles to those you fought earlier. And the controls also score 17 out of 20. Personally, I would have liked to have seen some touch screen controls in a game like this. As far as visuals, performance and audio goes, Fuga Melodies of Steel runs very well on the Switch. It is actually using the Unreal Engine 4 despite its appearances and there are lots of 3D models made to look like 2D sprites. Some of this works really well, such as the different vehicle designs and the fluidity of their movement, but I would have liked to have seen a little more variety in terms of the different enemies you'll face. The art style looks good, some of the hand drawn characters look really nice and others aren't quite up to the same standard in my opinion. You'll see a bit of duplication with some of the Burman soldiers. Performance has been rock solid for me in docked and handheld modes. I've had no crashes at all, no frame drops. I can't tell you the frame rate it runs at, it looks to be maybe 30 or 60, but it's not a game where you particularly need to worry about that. I'd say it's probably 30 as this is the Unreal Engine 4. The game has a lovely soundtrack.
what it does well is combat music that isn't irritating. It's one of the first things I look out for, and I didn't notice it, which is a very good sign. The voice actors do a decent enough, if squeaky job, but you won't find English voice acting here. If that's an issue for you, well, this won't be the one for you then. Visuals and performance, 18 out of 20. A touch more variety, and that would have been right up there. And the audio scores, 16 out of 20. It's very good, it's just never great. Fuga Melodies of Steel will set you back $39.99. Weirdly, I couldn't find it in the UK eShop. I'm not sure if it's coming at a later date or what the situation is there. It feels a little bit expensive to me. I really like the combat, but the same things repeat. Most of the elements are fun, but I would have liked a bit more variety. I'm almost positive most of you guys would echo this sentiment once you've played to the end of the game, but play it, you definitely should. I give value 16 out of 20. <laughs> Fuga Melodies of Steel is a lovely turn-based RPG which thrives on the relationships between the characters but stutters a little when it comes to variety. It's a testament to its excellent combat then and the characterization that it gets a switch up score of 84%. Do leave a comment down below to let us know what you think. We'll be replying to a few of those with a copy of the game. Thanks so much to all of you that enjoy the channel and as always for all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys, see ya! Yeah.